uh, then uh, you go ahead and I'll introduce you by your first name, Carol, and where she's located is somewhere in the United States, and it's my understanding that she's uh, articulate and fluent on the serial real estate frauds that can be used against people like myself and a sheriff in Kentucky. Carol, would you like to introduce yourself? Everybody's listening. Sure, I'm known as Carol Keen, K-E-I-H-N, and I am uh, able to track the shadow system where they're actually, everybody that has gotten a loan or remodification or bought a car or bought a house since uh, at least the year 1998, they have actually ran 10 assignments of loans behind the scenes in a shadow docket. That's what I call it, a shadow docket system. And the way that I found, maybe I should tell my history a little bit real quickly. I'm a, I work for Kogi, Kogi Palmala, and I'm an SAP. <clears throat> I was an SAP expert. I was also an RFID calibration expert, and I did calibration on all the equipment within Colgate Palmolive's plant. So I did photo eye technology, and I'd have to figure out, you know, we're on this 100-foot line, the, the calibration needed to be started. You just didn't start on 1 through 100. You had to start where it stopped at. So it's kind of like the court system that we have. So, And I also... Um, uh, let's see what else would uh I was an inventory uh, control expert. So I retired in uh, the year 2008, and I was happily living my life, thinking everything was on the up and up, until my daughter was foreclosed upon in the year 2012. And I'm a very proactive mother and grandmother, have eight grandchildren and three children. And my daughter said, you know, I'm just going to let it go because I can't afford a lawyer. And I said, well, let me look at it. And I also worked under a federal attorney for eight years, and I have 168 credit hours in the various colleges. So I'm not illiterate by any means. It, so all of these things came full circle when I looked at my daughter's papers. I went and looked at them, and I noticed backdating on the insurance policy. She bought the home March 14, 2008. However, they made the insurance effective March 13, 2008, which means that they had that in her name prior to her signing. And it's in everybody's name. If you'll look at your papers when you purchase the home, uh -huh. they, will make, they will make it effective the day before. And that, this is why, because they get the insurance payoff from an island called New in New Zealand. And I don't know if it's NUE. But anyway, that's where they get the insurance payoff, and that's the reason for the timestamps and the documents that I found. When I found this backdating, I went to her house. I said, you give me everything. And I was very sick back then. I'm not anymore. But she, I said, let me look at it. I want them all. And she's like, really? I said, I want them all. So I got a trash bag. We went in the basement. I put everything in there. I came home, and within a week, I had opened up a document, a, a folder, and I opened it up. My daughter bought one home reportedly, one loan reportedly, but inside that folder, the real estate agent had accidentally sent my daughter his, what I call a crook file. There were three houses in there. There were nine loans in her name, and my it's, there were affidavits stating she was married, and my grandchildren's socials and um, things for those grandchildren were in there where she had actually signed for an IRS to release her tax records to the financer, to the loan broker, and they had taken those children's identities I had feared at that point. So I knew I had three houses, and uh, I knew the real estate agent. It's a small community, so I knew what was going on. I called him up, and I, and, I, and, I, and I he was on his cell phone. He was out eating dinner. He said, I said, have you got a few minutes? He said, certainly. I said, uh you know, Rachel Diddy, I'm her mother. And he's like, yeah, yeah, how's she doing? I said, well, she's getting foreclosed upon. And he said, well, uh, I hate to hear that. And I said, well, the funny thing is, I was looking at the folder in the, ref um, the referral card you sent her. And I said, and uh, there's three houses in here and nine loans. And he said, oh, my F-U-C-K-I-N-G-G-O-D. Yeah. And, and hung up on me. So then I went to Office Max because when I was looking at these documents at the bottom of the title work, it said um, that they use financial consumer services, and I have it. It might not be exact. This is all on video, too, folks. It's all on recording. I have all the information on recordings. So on the bottom of this um, title commitment, it said they use financial consumer credit services. I looked that company up, and the only thing that I could find was a Japanese guy who had done a patent. 
that patent was for an inkjet sprayer that would allow the ink to be sprayed on paper, but only certain photo processors would fix, pick it up. So they are using the old technology. And my dogs may bark because my husband just came home. Oh, great. Be for, yeah, go ahead. For a moment. Go ahead and tell your husband who you're talking to. And, uh, you know, do well, it, it will when he gets in here. Okay. Get that. He's not. They just do that when they know that he's coming. And I can mute out for a moment if you want me to. Oh, no, no, no. I'll tell you. Uh, this uh, this is our 663rd radio show from this location, and the smart guy, just like you're a smart lady, the smart guy who is 74, or 73 that I work with all the time, he lives in Vancouver, British Columbia area, and uh, he's got a dog named Silas who is blind. He's really an old dog, and so we deal with barking dogs, and it's almost a trademark at this point. So your dogs are calmed down now. Your husband must be home. So uh, yeah. Whenever you're settled, you can continue. I am settled now, so we can continue. Yep. So I went to, I went and got everything photo processed, knowing that there was a patent out, and I had them at Office Max do all documents. I had 600 and something, and I put them in chronological order. If I had an, if I had anything with a double date on it, I made a copy of it. I put the date on the front, and I inserted that where they had the backdating going on so I could actually reverse engineer what the, I saw on those papers. So I made a disc. I got, I took one piece of paper out, the marriage affidavit. I went to the title company and these are people that I know and Robin uh, Moore, who's the administrator there at Title Abstracts of Richmond Incorporated. Um, I said, there was something funny going on. It appears one of your employees has committed fraud. And I said, that's covered under the title policy. My daughter's being foreclosed upon, and I want you to handle this. And she said, well, this is normal. I said, it's not normal when she's not married, and she's never been a member of a private LLC. And I said, furthermore, your affidavit that your employee filled out and signed for says that it is, uh, she verified it was true. I said, it's on the back of a bug inspection report. I said, here's the bug inspection report, double-sided for you. So why would they take and copy-paste this various these various assignments like this. I said, now I want this fixed and I'm not kidding you, but we only had a few days to answer the court case. So I answered it because after I did that with her and I found out that she was not being forthright with me and taking care of it or with my daughter either, because my daughter of course then had to call him and tell him it was okay for her mother to do this. My daughter does other things. She doesn't have a head for the legal. I do. Good. So, so I went to the land records office. And I got all three of those properties. She bought 422 Randolph Street on 314-2008, reportedly. But there were three three documents in the title work that string. And so 422 Randolph Street, Lot 154, was tied to 10,007 State Road 38 in Greensburg, Indiana. That's the county connection. All of this, everybody in the United States that doesn't know about this, they are taking in one properties in the county. And they have two within the city. <clears throat> the other property was 4383 U.S. Highway 35, and I could be off on that number. So that that one belonged to Tony Bond. The 10,007 State Road 38 belonged to um, a Me Happy Lane, and then her property reportedly was being sold to her by a Paul Stickle. And she did all this. I had attorney an attorney look at her paperwork when she did it, but later on. This, this real estate agent had sent her a file, like they always do, um, of her papers to keep for her records, and he sent her a referral card. Well, what he did was he screwed up, and he sent those papers to her that were his, and he knew it because later that year he sent her a HUD-1 form and said, don't bother digging in your papers. I know you're very busy. Go ahead and use this, and she did. Nobody wants, you know, if people don't know about this, a lawyer checked out her original papers. Everything was on the up and up. She did that. And she never knew until the foreclosure and those papers saw the light of day. And when they did, I was hopping around like a fairy. My husband's like, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I've got the keys to the universe right here. I know what they're doing. They were backdating. And I happen to know Met Life very well, Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. When I worked for Colgate Palmolive for 10 years, um, there was a number of um, gentlemen 
one of them being my boss, I was working there. I was a very good employee, very conscientious. I checked out my quality. And so come to find out, he was taking and selling government-issued contract, uh, a government-issued contract product that we ran. He was selling it out the back door for a fraction of the price. He was telling corporate New York that women like me were actually creating bad product when it wasn't so. So I caught them and I told them, you got 45 days to fix this or I'm going to go to the EEOC. And I did. And I, and I went, I took Colgate Palmolive to court. It was Isaacs versus Colgate Palmolive. And it is a precedence for the hostile work environment in the seventh circuit, which is right. I'm down in Indiana and in Wisconsin. I was just up there field and I found out how they're doing it in Wisconsin. They're running it under judge Needham in St. Croix County. The secret of one of the secret assignments through zero numbered properties, just to let you in on that. How often do you get up to the Minneapolis, Wisconsin area? Well, I've been up there three times now because I was looking at fraud under Denny, Dennis, uh, one of my friends, Dennis Fick, and he doesn't care if I mention his name, and uh, Chris Hackbart. So they've been fighting this for a little while, and they, I went up and got what I did was I got the records from the. Um, Land Records Office, the, the the County Records Office in Columbia County, and that it's 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 like an abstract title search that I do. I get the tax records and everything. I get everything concerning the property. Then I went and got into the court case. So I married those two together, and we have a wonderful case that brought upon the court. And I've done this, replicated this, what I found in this folder, about twenty times, and I'm successful about twenty times. So I would say that. This is occurring everywhere that somebody's not an insider. Okay. So well, I, well, first of all, I think this, I'm going to be filing a, I'm going to write it myself, a, uh, an affidavit that I'm going to take to the courthouse and give them tomorrow. And it's going to be very short. It's going to say, you know, from field to you, uh, statement number one, uh, the case number, doesn't matter what it is, I've got it. I'm going to say the case number was uh, a witting fraud upon the court. Uh, a smart gentleman from New Jersey just emailed me, and he wants to talk to me about misprision of felony on the part of the judge who signed the fraud upon the court. But see, uh, I'll, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but it, God sure puts me in touch with the people that know everything. Uh, so basically, I'm thinking of a three-statement uh, uh, affidavit. Number one, this case is a fraud. Number two, fraud uh, invalidates or whatever the big word is, any transaction. Uh, and number three, I want a remedy. Uh, I can give them a dollar amount of a remedy before my house is forced to be sold. Uh, and the way, I know this is unrelated to what you do and what you do is much more complex. In fact, let's leave it at this. I'll send you an email about my issue because I'm more interested in getting the truth out. And by the way, I've already had one person in Georgia ask if they could rebroadcast this and knowing that you're fairly uh, vocal and open and you and I both know Telstar in Texas, I said, yeah, rebroadcast it everywhere. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, good. I, you I'm, out there, I'm out there. There's a bunch. Of, I've actually done this with Randy Kelton and Steve Skidmore did a in-depth name the people type interview and it's under 700 trillion in fraud found in case in Indiana because I had an analyst Joe Escobar on there going oh my gosh if what she's saying is true there's 700 700 trillion in paper alone fake paper mind you that they're working with because this is just a this is a uh, it's called fix world they're playing video games and everything's behind the scenes with these avatars and they think that nobody's going to catch them well they got caught well you know, able danger, which doesn't exist except sort of, uh, we, we've caught some people too, and, and they're going out of their minds. Do you see Obama just kicked a bunch of Rus Russian diplomats out today? Well, and, yeah, I can't stand either side anymore. Now, Donald Trump I do like, but I can't stand Bush either. No, I no, think, no, you're, you're in comfortable territory here, and when you say Bush, you can, it's any one of the Bushes, any one of the Clintons. Right, right, because Mr. Bush, the old man, started this under his uh, disclosure um, routine. I have the clip of the video, and I'm, I haven't had it out yet, but I'm actually going and, and I'm starting with him because he had a plan to not disclose until way late. Because the war on terror is like this. 
you take and put a bracket and you put a capital T in there and then you put error because they are planning on correcting the errors that they actually caused in this mill. And that is the war on terror. It is T in brackets and then it's error. They're doing error corrections and they're not disclosing to us that we are under a, an, a secret agreement and the agreement is under, you can do it on Google, ISDA 2004 Master Agreement Sharia Compliance and it'll bring up the PDF and you'll be able to read what they did to us. And they are failing to disclose to us under Securities Exchange Commission 10B5, I believe, that they, we are a party to a contract. It is absolutely required that they tell you that. The fraud upon the court field, you're going to need very se several prongs for that fraud upon the court, but I'm going to give you the biggest one now. Okay. Under the ISDA, it's an exotic derivative. The securities are sold from the court cases on Wall Street. They do have QCIP numbers. I have one from Denny. But I also have proof of it when they're taking people, children and older women. But what they do is they, they, uh, and I forget what I was saying now because I looked at my husband, Dad, gone it. Oh no, on. I can I can tell you what you were saying. You had talked about ISBA 2004 Master Agreement Sharia what? Oh, Sharia compliance, Com and that's S H A R I A H, I believe. Okay. I can send you those documents in a in a. I'll send you those documents in an email. But I also wanted to tell you that. They are doing fraud upon the court. There's, you got to prove it. They're committing fraud upon the office. That judge is. You need to say that he's committing fraud upon the office, and you need to tell him that the, uh, the that he has screwed around with whatever you want with the judicial machinery. And this is how they just sold Germany a bunch of useless cocoa bonds. Those cocoa bonds are under the ISDA. Now it brought down the economy almost over there and started Brexit. And, the, and this is all based on this false paper that I found, and that's how you prove, and this is what people can't prove, usually, how it affected the judicial machinery, and that is exactly how you can prove that what they have done has affected the judicial machinery under international law, and they were required to tell you that you were a party to a contract where Sharia compliance has circumvented our, the Constitution. I'm taking good notes. Good. So I don't want to get off track here, so I'll go back into this scenario, what the facts of what I did. I went down to the land records office, and I, I, I made it personal because I do know how to influence people. I did sales, too, for many years when I used to photograph the children in the schools and things. So I took pictures of, a, I, in my pile of papers, I had a picture of my two grandsons and my daughter. I went down and I said, I'm pretty sure my grandchildren's identity has been stolen. I got all the records for all three properties going back to the 80s, all the mortgages, all the deeds, everything that I could. Then I went into the plat room and I said, I want to know what I can do. I think my grandchildren's identity has been stolen. Well, there was two ladies in there. The one I thought worked there, but she didn't. She was a seasoned title expert named Diana. She said, who did you buy the house from? I said, reportedly, she bought it from Paul Stickle. Now, Paul Stickle is a Malta Knight, I do believe. So she said, I can't stand him. She goes, I'm going to help her. And the girl in the corner that worked there, that is as dingy as I don't know what, you could tell that she just loved this Paul Stickle, who's as obvious as the day is long. She's like, I already helped her. She goes, I don't care. I'm going to help her again. She goes, I'm sick of these bastards. And I'm just quoting that. She goes, I'm going to, and she looked at me and went to the corner to an administrative computer inside the, the plat room. She said, I'm doing what's called an anchor date search. Remember that anchor date. I said, okay. She pulled out my daughter's property, and it was tied to an undisclosed land contract that was hidden and an undisclosed sheriff's deed. They are doing that through public laws that they pass locally because the judges all own a piece of your property. They have an assignment through an old case or an old name where they're actually putting water liens and various liens, and they're shifting wheat liens around in this system they have. So here's my daughter's property. I got three properties, 422 Randolph Street, lot 154 is hers. And then I got the other two, and they're tied together in a different way, and that's too complicated to go into right now. But this 422 Randolph Street under the anchor date went to a 937 South, South 19th Street, lot 14. So I saw that sheriff's deed, I, and I knew the sheriff had been promoted to excise, of course, under Governor Pence. 
you promoted him to excise. And so I called up Laura Roberts. She's a deputy sheriff. And I, I, I went to her and I pled the case, basically. I said, look, I've got grandchildren. It looks, she goes, who, who'd you buy it from? Who'd you buy it from? I said, Paul Stickle. She goes, I know what they're doing. Go over to the courthouse right now and get case. And she gave it to me. It had an extra zero. It ended in two, zero, two, five. But it had an extra zero in there. And I said, it's got an extra zero showing from what's online. She goes, listen to me. Go over to the courthouse right now and get that case. So I went over. It was a three-month foreclosure that wasn't disclosed out in the public. Went over and, and got the case. And I thought I was going to get a very small case that was uncontested. This was a never-ending case. When the lady handed it to me, it was very casual back then. She goes, I'm sorry. This is a lawyer's file. It's a mess. It had nine properties in it. It tied into the county attorney's relatives. Um, he's named Ron Cross. He's the one, the county attorney's the one that owns the title company that did this. He is the county attorney, and now he is the attorney over the schools. So he's into everything, and he's got a disclosure stating that he deals in IDs. Well, of course he does, because they knew good and well what they had done to me. I was friends with this man. And he can't even look me in the eye, and he better not, because he's a criminal. How dare he? These are my... This is my blood. I will not. I won't do this. So anyway, I uh, got that anchor date search, and uh, I went over and got the court case, and I had my friend Linda Eels with me from here in Richmond, and she did a bunch of copies. I went to get some more money across the street from the bank, came back. We got about $300 worth of documents. There were post-it notes and everything in there. And I, and I went home, and I put it together, and what I what unfolded was horrible. But I went back the next week to get some more documents. And the clerk goes, you'll not get back in our room. You will not get back in here. we got to close it up. we got to revamp everything. And from now on in, it has to have security. It's all because of you. I said, what did I do? She goes, you got the judge's notes. I said, well, thank you. I didn't know it was the judge's notes. I thought it was a crooked clerk's note. Thank you for telling me, though. And I left. So then I answered the court case for my daughter. And then... I, re, I did an affid, I had my daughter do an affidavit of identity theft to the court, and then I also had her do one to the IRS. Everybody's had their identities compromised. The, the reason I did it to the IRS was for later defense. And, it, and then I had her do a 2848 IRS form, and this is important, IRS form 2848 is a power of attorney, but you can revoke all powers of attorneys where these attorneys are going in under Jane and John Doe's, and we are on the Miracle on 34th Street where the trustees are the does for Chris Kringle. I swear to goodness. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. We're listening. So, We're listening. That IRS form 4828? 2848. Oh, excuse me. 2848. Yeah, we've, uh, I've got people from around the country and, well, right now off the top of my head, uh, Georgia, New Jersey, and Oregon asking for the documents. So once you get the documents, I'm going to do this unless you tell me not to. I'm going to post them on this radio show ad. I'm going to post them on tomorrow's radio show ad. And I'm going to make them available in our private chat room, which you're going to be given access to. Before I go home, I will send you, I will trigger an email from Campfire. It'll come to you five minutes after I send it or less. And then all you do is, uh, you know, you can use your real name or you can use uh, a fake name. Uh, I'll just read them right now. Ginger Cookies fake. Go Banks is real. Hanging Chad is real. Harlan Roy. Most people, it looks like you're using their real name. I don't get into details. I get into truth and caring about my global neighbors and, mm -hmm. having, and having a little bit of a uh, problem with uh, robed people that are doing evil to unwitting victims like me. Well, it's our government and, and uh, it is our, it, there is a I got, I got a lot of um, information because it kind of span, it kind of, you know, like what you do, it kind of went out. And, and I do need to talk to you about some children and some custody cases because they're using flight manifestos oh. uh, in, in the custody cases. They're using a uh, passenger list. And uh, I happen to know that AIG, when 911 happened, they opened up, they forewent the coroners and they opened up the manifestos and it appears they have never closed them and they are the ones aig john ben moshe he died last year but he is the ceo of metropolitan life insurance company and him and goldman sachs and mclean brothers developed such a scheme to take and make their company met metropolitan life insurance company 
a company that dealt not only in mortgage banking, because they couldn't before they mutualized in 2000, they made it a livestock company under cattle code, 7213, I believe, but I have that documentation too, and they did not correct. So they were tag teaming Mr. Levin in New York, who later died reportedly in 911. They were tag teaming him, and he let it pass, and they started a bank called MetLife Bank. That bank came in and out like a thief in the night. Wells Fargo is taking over its role right now because they're doing the dosi do with all these identities. They are holding them in abeyance because Metropolitan Life Insurance Company was holding all the industrial block life insurance policies going back to the 1800s. I have their testimony. And you can go to Carol Keen under YouTube, C-A-R-O-L, K-E-I space, K-E-I-H-N, under public official and judicial corruption, there is a folder with all of those documents recorded, and I walk everybody through it. Okay, I'm going to post that in our chat room. It's your name, Carol Keen. Hang on. K-E-I-H-N. It's a YouTube. And what's the name of the YouTube? Well, in the folder, uh, public official and judicial corruption. And you ought to be able to find the actual folder if you just put in Carol Keen on Google 700 trillion. And it should bring up the video that will take you to the playlist. If not, I'll send you one uh, later so you can share it with people. But I'll be adding some more things in there, too, because I have a lot. Oh, good. I think uh, I don't want to sound uh, like a Bible-banging uh, person that's pious, but I'm absolutely certain what we're experiencing live and on camera and on recording is God has put a network together to expose all this evil. Well, I would agree that Jesus is uh, with me all the time, so they don't like you to use the word Jesus. The black robes that uh, I'm going to tell what one of my good friends, my brother, told me, he said that the W's uh, hold negative energy, and they don't like it when you use the word Jesus, and the courts certainly don't like it when you do. Well, I don't care about the courts. They're a bunch I of know. liars. Yeah, no, no, this is great. And by the way, our chat room is uh, very uh, attentive. They, you know, there was no notice for this show. This came up. In fact, let me... Give you just a break for 30 seconds. This live stream that we're doing right now uh, was created in the first 60 seconds of a phone call between Agent Telstar, uh, Carol, and Field. And uh, it took me maybe five minutes to create the link for the new radio show. And then it took uh, Carol and I went back and forth uh, texting on Skype and emailing. And also we were on the phone once arranging you know how we're going to do this and i preferred to use skype she preferred to use phone so we cut a deal right down the middle we did skype this time because it's the fastest and we'll do the phone uh every other time if we ever do this again which it's totally up to you do you have anybody else that's broadcasting you live and uh, putting you on I used, I used to be I, I i've done interviews but i used to be the host of the show 61 and they put 61 on that that was interesting on blog talk because i was born in 1961 reportedly and uh then i did i was a co-host on two moms on a burrow with renee powers out of california and we brought forth this information back in 2013 we started doing it late 2013 when i found out from an IRS special agent named Kathy Cox in Ogden, Utah, how they were stealing the identities. But but I don't want to digress here from this, this the, the factual line of what I found and how I found it. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so I went to the land uh, land records office, then I went to the courthouse, then I answered the, the uh, I countered, and then I did an affidavit for my daughter. It's very important to do an affidavit, and in your affidavit, I believe, and this is just my preference. I put in there that uh, she was the agent majority. She was a non-resident because this is why. Under the the traffic laws, the highway and safety driving laws and the license laws, there is a clause here in Indiana that says everybody is a non-resident. Well, that's their pass-through. They're using these laws that they keep on the books as a pass-through to get the payoff. So... She put that, she was the Asian majority, she was a non-resident, she was of sound mind and body, and that she was compliant with, I think it's 11B and 26B for federal. I did both state and federal at the end, and I put in there the events that happened with the documentation. Well, of course, they tried to, they just have ignored it, but they never answered it because they can't, because 
I'm telling the truth based on their own document. They don't know what to do. So we went to court. I, I, I also did another counter complaint and amended one where I named all the parties. It went from U.S. Bank, comma, N.A. Now, folks, when there's a comma in your documents, that means there's two separate entities. It could be any national association, or it can mean not applicable, or it can mean I found something under Loretta Lynch that the N.A. stands for, too. So there's two entities when you have those commas in the names. That is that is not how it's supposed to be done. A, a company is a company. When there's a comma, that means that's a break. That doesn't mean it belongs with it. A semicolon would be that that belongs with it, I believe, but it's not a comma. And there's a case in Illinois where the judge ruled under the Constitution there was a comma, that that was two separate issues. So that case in Illinois, which I have somewhere, I just can't recall it, that actually proves what I'm saying, that there are more than one party because Mears is bringing them in. And uh, so I answered all that, and I talked about that in this brief that I have. And, and I actually go over that brief, and it, it excuse the way it looks. It doesn't matter. I don't care about their laws because I'm not a lawyer. I don't practice under the bar. I just, matter of fact, said, okay, we'll open this. And I said it. I wrote it. We, very well, we shall open this can of worms. And I put down all the properties. And I put down all the loan numbers that I found in that document, that, that folder. So they were like, oh, my gosh, you know, and they couldn't answer. They have an answer today. Now, my daughter went in, and the judge would not let me come forth. So she did the best she could. They brought in a big wig lawyer. She did the best she could the first time. Then I had her sign a portion of the property over to me so that I could hold it for the interest of my minor grandchildren and in hopes that I could get into court so I could argue it. However, the judge, without any prompt or any motion moving him to do anything, issued a judgment order and decree stating that I would have to come in pro se and that I would have to enter that way and that I couldn't enter any other way because she sent him notice that she had given me this special warranty deed. When, I, when they did that, I had to rebut the presumption. And Dennis, my friend Denny, helped me with that. But I rebutted it, and I said that living woman, Carol, does not wish to contract with you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, he wrote it that Carol does not wish to contract. However, they brought in a bigwig director named Tammy Lynn Ortman of Lewis and Capps Law Firm. She's a director. She, she is a specialist in defending the Scottish Free Right Masons. The man who sold her the property, Paul Stickle, reportedly the owner slash seller, his father was a big wig in the Scottish Free Right Masons. So this man did 9,000. I, I, I had a good case because this guy did 9,000 properties here, and his girlfriend, while he was married, he had a girlfriend, she went to federal prison for this crime. So I'll share that case with you as well because the, basically what that case is about is it's how to do the fraud, and it'll show you the progression of the married and unmarried people that they're using. Um, my niece was part of the victimization of this woman, and they didn't name Paul Stickle. They hid his identity, as a matter of fact. Well, my niece gave me an FBI agent named Neil Freeman his card. I called him up. He said, you know, I wanted to get him, but I couldn't. Nobody would let me. He goes, and I always found that interesting because they went after the woman, but they didn't get him. Well, now that I know what I know about the Sharia compliance, I know why they went after the woman. He's an agent. He's called a foreclosure agent. He holds the property for the judges. And that's what he does. That's why he didn't get in trouble. Not only that, they have a lawyer who is named Charles Hyde or Chuck Hyde. And uh, he got in trouble for 29 counts of bankruptcy fraud. They knocked it down to one, and it was just against his clients. They didn't want to bring up the fact that he had 2,950 bankruptcy cases on all the secret shadow dockets because this is a foreclosure state you have to have it out in the open you cannot be running concurrent foreclosures behind the scenes like out in california however i suspect they're doing both judicial and non-judicial concurrently in this system and i have a video in there showing you how they do it they file two cases so i've got rachel's property 422 randolph street and i have 938 south 17th tied to be of the same date to, they say except it's years prior, so March the March the 14th, and she made the check out for March the 13th, by the way. They told her to, and then they came up with something. They couldn't do it till the next day. So she took the check in, the cashier's check, paid $6,150 down. She is not a 
She worked at the state hospital for Richmond, Indiana. She was a good worker. She had great credit. She went and filled out the loans. So she's not one of these people that are guilty of inflating their income. She did not do that. They took her identity and stole it. Metropolitan Life did nine of those loans. I have all of them. I called the old company. It was called First Horizon, and they had merged with MetLife prior to legally merging with them back in 2008. They were already merged with them. So I called, and it was now named Calipers, and I was talking to the young girl. that Her name started with a V, and I said, look, I've got these loans here. Explain what happened. And she goes, well, you know, we're still part of MetLife, and she goes, give me those loan numbers. She goes, those two loans have been purged. I said, well, how do you know they've been purged? Usually, because I've been, when I, I, purging means that they're out of the system. She goes, it says right here they've been purged. So I knew that MetLife had ran those loans. And I also knew that MetLife had um, done a, a project where they took, and when they demutualized, I lost $25,000. So there was litigation under the demutualization of MetLife. So I knew that they had an agent that would come in and do what's called a buyer-seller program to where they'd sell the stocks for you for free because they were going to put it out in the um, uh, public offering, initial public offering they called an IPO. So I knew about all of that. So it was like everything hit me full blast. I was like, why would I, no wonder I went through that Colgate Palmolive case. It was so I would know about this. So I knew that, that it was MetLife involved. And here I wasn't sure, but I thought I got loans from MetLife, I think. And they went out of business. The bank went out of the business when the regulation got tough back in 2013. Right after I found out they went out of business, the bank did, and they quit banking. It is illegal to own an insurance slash mortgage banking syndicate. It is, it's RICO, and they are part of the Black, Blackstone or Black. Hmm, I think it's, I don't, is it from Chicago or Canada? Um, well, Canada is tied to this because, and that's something I need to speak to too real quickly. In your mortgage documents, it may say that you make your first payment to a P.O. box. That P.O. box that Rachel was to have paid it to, I called it in time before they erased it. It was belonged to a Brandon Allen from DTZ Barnicky, and I may not be saying that, up in Canada. So right away, her first payment that she made went up to there, supposedly, this DTZ Barnicky. And her identity is all over the place up there. So I'm sure of it because she just so happened to go into a place where the biggest wig in the whole state who's buying all kinds of properties for the judges is a seller. So I, I hit upon some main players in this scheme. And she didn't know any of them. But it looks like they were setting her up behind the scenes. And that's what they do to everybody. And uh, anyway, they took... <clears throat> Then I went and filed a, a whistleblower, and I, I started talking with the Cax, Kathy Cox from Ogden, Utah, and I talked to her several times. She called me March the 12th, and she said, uh, 2013, she said, Carol, don't say anything. I need to know if this is your phone number, and it wasn't. It was a Massachusetts number. I have it. I said, no, that's not. She goes, okay, give me your phone number. I gave her my other identifying information. She said, somebody internally has tried to close down your whistleblower claim. What I'm going to do before the sequester is I'm going to award you award you 35%. So I got the award letter. Three months later, Kathy was gone. Well, about three months. Kathy was no longer reachable. They said she wasn't there. And uh, they closed out my whistleblower claim in triplicate because everything's done in triplicate. So, And I haven't even pursued that because I'm not sure how at this point. Field because it got real bad. What happened was we went, when this new attorney came in, she did what was called discovery and she wanted all the documents. So I thought, fine, I'll give her all the documents. Let me go ahead and give her the judge. This judge that was hearing my daughter's case was the judge who had represented a former owner on this property. And that former owner was fictitious. So he had an interest in the property. He owned the land and mineral rights and nobody knew it, but I discovered that. And we go to court and, and no matter what my daughter did, they were going to get her for contempt. Why? Because they didn't want to have to disclose. And that discovery is under a title called disclosure and discovery. Well, they don't have to disclose until a certain point in this mortgage fraud. And that's where George Bush, the old man, he said the whole key to this is when we disclose. And then here comes Bill Clinton, B.J. Clinton, 
and he's uh, bringing in the Full Employment and Education Act and bringing in all the children, a, a very vulnerable population of dropouts. And he said, we can get all kinds of money. And he testified before Congress, and I have that clip too, but I don't have it out yet, but I have it. It was in 1987 when he was the governor. And I think Mondale was sitting with him, and Congress admitted that they are not restrained by time at all in this debacle, this thing they're doing. Um, so all of that, it's right out in the open. You know, you know what, Field, there was only four people that watched that when I put it out. I mean, when I originally put out the C-SPAN video, and on C-SPAN, there were only four people in the whole United States that even looked at that because people have been busy. They just aren't paying attention to what these crooks have been doing. So I totally, um, I totally understand that, but I think um, I, it'll be interesting. I can track the hits on this radio show. I mean, uh, the, in fact, I'd say by an hour or two hours after we hang up on each other, I'll, I'll start monitoring to see how many people uh, listen to this radio show alone. Uh, okay. And and then I think you'll see some rather exponential growth uh, because there's people. Let me just tell you where you're being heard right now. And I don't see everybody, but I see Portland, Oregon. I see uh, Asheville, North Carolina. I see a person I don't recognize, a second person I don't recognize, a person in the Pacific Northwest, a person in Fort Worth, Texas, a person in New Jersey, my wife, who is stuck over in the United Kingdom, because as a whistleblower, I've apparently irritated some people, and they're playing passport uh, customs games with her, but th that game will be short-lived. Uh, there's a dentist that I don't recognize, meaning a D-E-N-N-I-S, not a guy that does teeth. That I don't recognize him. There's a man in Cyprus. Uh, That's probably my friend, Dennis, maybe. Uh, does his last name start with a B? Nope. Okay, it's not. This, this dentist starts with a B. We got a guy in Seattle. We got a guy in Florida. We got a lady in Maine. We got a man over in North London. I forgot where Hanging Chad is. Got a guy in the Twin Cities, a lady in London, a guy in uh, Alabama. Guy in Denver, uh, a woman from Oregon who's on vacation for the winter down in Florida. Got a very bright guy in Phoenix. Actually, we're all bright at something. Uh, we got a bright guy in nutrition, uh, but I'm not sure where he's from. Kansas City, maybe. We got somebody else out there in the Pacific around Everett, uh, Washington area. Uh, we got a guy in Stavanger, uh, Norway. A lady in Canada. A, got a guy down there in uh, just around Sherman, Pear and Field area of Texas. I believe that's where he's from. Uh, and I'm losing control of my thing. Got one I don't recognize, the gentleman who introduced us. Uh, I call him Telstar. Uh, he's from the Austin, Texas area. Guy named Vanishing Point from uh, Eastbourne, I believe. Uh, and I just got a message. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I got a, somebody wants to talk on the phone, but I'll do that later. Uh, and then the very last person that I can see is down in uh, the panhandle of Florida. And all the uh, I'm 67 years old, and I'm sure you're 29 since you're a grandmother. Uh, and most women are 29 in my eyes. But, I'm 55. No, that's good. I was 55 12 years ago, and it worked out okay for me. I hope it works out okay for you. What I'm telling you is uh, you're, you've already got probably 300 people listening to you, but uh, we'll see where well, they, Go ahead. Yeah. That's okay. I'm not, you know, I'm kind of a, I used to be a little bit shy about this, but it's so bad. And I need, I need people to start in. We need to wake up here yeah. and start doing this. And I'm not able to help people do this. They, I will help you help yourselves. But, I, and, and I, I take on very few cases where I actually do it. And uh, I will, I will help you feel, and then you can help other people. How's that? It sounds great. And, uh, tell how to do it on the videos. And I'm really good at finding the fraud. My expertise is in finding the fraud and it is nowhere else. So people have had to try, you know, tried to get me to write their legal briefs. And I hate writing legal briefs. I do. I can't stand it. I don't want to write legal briefs. I want to find the fraud. It's like solving a big Sudoku puzzle for me and I enjoy it. I don't enjoy writing up briefs. So I just putting that out there because the first time I came out with this, September the 2nd of 2013, I had unlimited minutes on my Xfinity for my phone. And they shut my phone off because they thought I had a business. My phone rang day and night, 
people were desperate, and I understand the desperateness. I understand people being emotional, but I didn't cause this. I am not the lawyers that caused this. They hire lawyers. They don't know what to do, and I'm telling you, the lawyers are the problem because they know about this, and, and, I, and I digress. Let me go back. Um, I did the whistleblower complaint. Then we went to court, and she got her for contempt. Well, she's going to get her for contempt anyway because that's part of the deal, that what they want to do is go in. And the, the, and I have the hearing, and I show how they're doing it in every state. You will find it. The judge said to her, this Tammy Lynn Ortman, we don't do this that very often. You're brought in very special for this very, you're using a legislative, legislative bill that we hardly ever use. Would you agree? She goes, I would not disagree with that. So he goes, I feel as if we are retaliating. And she said, no, Your Honor. If we go under this legislative bill that helps the uh, to protect the lenders, it won't be viewed as retaliation. And she cited, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to make up a code, folks, but it's in there. I have it under the judge says we're retaliating. 30-20-7-8. Well, they instead of the dashes, they put dots into the court document, so the clerks are in on it. And that that code, the way she said it, it shows that it was something to protect the lenders from losing the money they are owed from the reported borrowers, right? Well, with the dots, though, when I went and looked for it, it brought up two different codes, one for an abandoned house and two, two different laws, two for abandoned children that people left in their house. These people make me sick. They are trafficking children under these identities, and we don't, they're immigrant children, I believe, and other children. That's how they do it, and I track the identities. This is how they do your identities. Whoever you bought the house from, their last name, and the IRS agent helped me too, the last name. So let's say Rachel bought a house off of, she, she thought Stickle, but the land records were showing Charles and Annette Scott. So I looked up my grandchildren's names. Cameron and Chandler's her first name. I looked up their names under that. Sure enough, there was all kinds of them in Indiana. And then when I talked to the IRS special agent, I told her about it, Kathy Cox. She said, I know what they're doing. She said, the police write tickets. She said, you'll find it under your traffic division. The police write tickets, and at the IRS level, we don't check the name, and we don't check the birthday. They change the birthdays, too. What we do check is to make sure that it's a valid Social Security number that's not in the death master. And that is how they were generating the tickets. Now, our police chief has since retired very quickly. Our clerk of courts got fired when I first found it out. And they can lie all they want. I was I saw the meeting where she got fired, where she was leaving. Um, and uh, our comptroller, the head lady of finance, she was fired too. Now, I've since talked to her, and she told me how what I'm saying is probably true. She didn't tell me how they were funneling the funds, but I kind of already know. I had a friend who heard about uh, the uh, traffic tickets, and she went and looked up our city on the um, Duns and Bradstreet, and it was trading under Highland Heights Golf Court, which is part of the Parks Department, which brings in the Parks Department, and Oregon ought to be very interested in that. Maine, in Maine, you've got a listener from Maine, that's where they run the title fraud and the warranties on all the vehicles. That is a Maine state for this multi-state system that they're running and I know that from a girl in Colorado Michelle um, and it's Michelle Hansen online uh, she was married to a man who was into finance he sought her out after her husband died at an early age and he took her ex-husband's her, her dead husband's identity and he had a heyday and she had all the papers so had a lot of help along the way and uh it goes into more, but there you have the just of it. you got to look for backdating in your insurance papers. you got to look for backdating and name misspellings and the wrong address in your papers. The insurance is the biggest one. Now, you got to think about this. If you're buying a house and they've got insurance in your name, even the flood, they're doing under the flood right now. It's in, they're, they're making you get flood insurance because they're getting um voluntary, the, the insurance company's got on this sweet deal, and they're layering the match, but they're actually making you the owner prematurely. So if you sit down, and B.B. Gabor was wonderful at this. B.B. Gabor, his name's really Gabor Hedegas, and uh, I met him once. I have a picture where I'm on his lap. It's very interesting. I was up in Canada. My mother was uh, worked uh, for the uh, 
ABCO on the missiles. She had security clearance, and we all went up to Canada for a meeting back in the early 60s, and I remember being there, and uh, there's a picture of me sitting on this guy's lap. Anyway, this uh, B.B. Gabor wrote a song called Metropolitan Life, Fidgety Pete, Othello, uh, Turntable Turn, and he's telling everybody about the system because he was an expert in synthesizing, and, and one of the records, um, he talks about simulated groove. Well, my husband was looking at his old cars. He, I saw your car field. My husband has had a 48 Ford Coupe with a chopped. He loves old cars. So I was, he was looking at old cars and he grabbed me. He goes, come here. I didn't do anything. I don't know what's going on. And this tape came up. This recording came up and it was from a Randy Quivers, Q U I B E R S. And it was called simulated groove. And it was after BB had reportedly hung himself in the UK. Um, and it's, they had taken a compile, they had compiled his, his uh, characters in his songs, and they had done a very dark video uh, called Simulated Groove under Randy Quivers. Well, this involves Lincoln, Nebraska, and everything. The people that photographed and did this recording, there's a midget in there, and he's talking about being in Lincoln, Nebraska in one of his feeds. And that was during the Boys Town thing, when they found out about that. So somebody sent me that message. The FBI did give me contact information to send all my files. So they, in the February 5th of 2015, they were actively investigating. The sheriff told me, I can't tell you if they're investigating. And then he goes, but you better send your documents to them since there's an investigation going on. That's all he would tell me. He told me basically, right? Yeah, I but understand. It, it appears to me that when they started the fusion centers, um, Neil kept, Neil Freeman kept saying, Carol, I would love to do something, but my supervisor won't let me. Well, I thought he meant his actual supervisor at the FBI, so I told the sheriff that when I called. The sheriff said, Carol, the guy that wouldn't let him do it was the Attorney General of the State. So I went and looked up partnerships, Fed and State, and sure enough, the Fusion Center came up. In 2013, Governor Pence signed together for a Fusion Center where the states married the Feds. And the feds no longer have federal jurisdiction. They got to go by what the attorney general says if it bothers their day to day business. And it certainly has put a little bit of a hamper. And also the feds raided the courthouse February the 12th of 2013 at the exact time that the Goldman Sachs executive tried to friend the grandmother on Facebook. So I have that recorded in time. And it was exactly the time that the Vatican was hit by lightning. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I remember when the Vatican was hit with lightning. I got a picture of that. Uh, we've published so much in terms of, uh, well, this is, I think this is radio show 663. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but we I just published thought that was kind of interesting. I, I'm not that I'm not trying to poof myself up here, but I'm trying to tell everybody, I don't care what anybody thinks. I believe in God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and I think God's in on this all the way. There's no way that a housewife retired from anywhere should be finding this sort of thing out. Well, I agree 100% on our last radio show. And by the way, we'll need to wrap this one up a little bit. But in the last radio show, I pointed out, speaking of God and his networking and his using various of us humble vessels, on the morning of 9-11, which is my, I guess that's what I'm known for, the flying events of 9-11. I think I'm fairly well informed. Uh, there are three E-4Bs, three of the... Uh, doomsday flying machines airborne on 9-11 uh -huh. but there were four call signs but the call sign that was shared and it was a mistake of paperwork but the paperwork was um, some Christian put the paperwork out in this manner the call sign for one of the three airplanes was SWORD S-W-O-R-D 31 and some other places it showed up as WORD 31 well that's a direct reference to Ephesians uh, 6, 17, and it's uh, talking about the, uh, the sword of the truth, which is the word of God, or the sword of the spirit, which is the truth of the word of God. You can look it up yourself. Anyway, how many more minutes do you think you need to, to sort of get these people stimulated? They want more of your information. Well, um, what I can do is we can do another one if you want to. But let me tell you, I sent you some stuff, you and David, because I talked to David. Um, um, Telstar had me talk to him a couple years back. Yeah. 
and I talked to some lord over there in England too. I don't know. I can't remember his name. But um, he, uh, th this, this, uh, you need to look for backdating, and you need to get every all of your papers, including the originals, if you have them, and they need to be in chronological order, and you need to get them photo processed to the professional into one place, because I'm just telling you, Field, that will help me. If, I, if you can, you can send them to me another way, but I like everything to be in one file and I have Adobe Professional, I can pull it out and do the exhibits to, to help prove what I'm going to say. And then I have to be very meticulous and, and articulate in how I explain what is happening. But it goes in line with fraud upon the court, and I do think that that's the only way we're going to win is that fraud, of, well, there's some common law people that are going to talk to me now, but I don't, um, I don't know that much about it. It doesn't seem to be working around here, but maybe it will. I'm going to talk to this guy today about a court of record, but you can do your own court of record if you're into the common law. I don't know that much about it. I'm kind of straightforward. Matter of fact, I don't cite case law and stuff usually, but I'm going to have to, and I have some case law. Look for backdating. Look for your name being misspelled and read your briefs. Those briefs will tell you everything. They will have field. What's your middle name? I don't have a middle name. I'm just field McConnell. Okay, well, if they put, if you do have a middle name, they'll put your middle initial in the heading. They'll put the McConnell name somewhere on there. And then before it's over, they'll start calling you Mr. McConnell. You'll have three separate names in there. And you, if you make sure you check your loan documents too to see if they didn't put you under another city. For instance, in Columbia, the property is a uh, N3297, uh, Otsego Road, Rio, Wisconsin. And the loan papers that were put into the papers by J. Peterman Law Group, um, by a, a Scott Nabke, N-A-B-K-E, uh, actually have the loan itself. They're not recorded in the land records in the court case, and nobody noticed, including myself, for six months. I feel really bad about that. I looked at it. It had West Allis, Wisconsin, which is about 80 miles away from C Columbia County. And then also in the papers... In the letters uh, that they were serving them, they had Judge Needham listed. Well, Judge Needham in Wisconsin, they have special administrative law judges. Under the bill 4192 that Congress recently passed to give them safe harbor until February of 2016 so that they could wind this fraud up because the Obama administration is paying themselves off now with redemptions, and I suspect it is of human lives. The, that code said, that guy said on there, and I have it in the tape in my playlist, he said, we're not going to handle the courts judicially anymore. They're now going to become administrative. And they said it to the world. That's their way of disclosing. Nobody's listening. I mean, a lot of people aren't. I did because there's something wrong with me. Evidently, I'm so mad about my daughter that I would go to the end of the earth for my children and all children. This is not okay that, because I trapped my grandchildren's identities. My daughter was married. Never married, but it showed that she was married, and she's smart for not getting married because the divorce courts get hold of you and they'll take everything you got. But she was listed as um, in there as being married to um, um, Scott Bond, Tony Scott Bond, uh, the guy that on the 4393 U.S. Highway 35. They always bring in a highway. They did it on Karen Hudes too, and she took me for a ride. She tried to, and she got caught, too. She got caught doing exactly what they're doing with the guys she put upon me. She sure did. Okay, let, me stop, let me stop you right there. And, and it, is it your opinion that Karen Hudis is not who and what she says she is? I have Karen Hudis. I, I told her off. I said, talk about a bunch of cows selling cows. Yeah, yes, it is my opinion of that. Well, that's my opinion, too, and I've dealt with her and I've met her in person. But anyway, go back to you and that. We can do some more of these shows, but I'd like to wrap this up in five minutes because I've got some pressing personal things. Okay. okay. Well, that's that's basically, that's basically, I tracked my grandson. Rachel uh, Diddy was uh, taken in under a C, an LLC. They're hiding everybody under uh, LLCs. You're, you're buying into an LLC as a private member, and they're using your identity. So she married uh, Tony Bond, and she got a divorce, and they, they gave a child away named Chandler Walker. On now, that's part of his name. He was transported to Spencer County, Indiana. Every state has a county that specializes in minor name changes. Then that case was transported over to Vanderburg County, where there's two time zones at least in that county, uh, different ones than us. So there's three actually, 
and he gave him up away to a man named Daryl Collins, who has three foster children, and he owns a, a Chicago home health care, and it all ties into the Obamacare, and I have a video out that shows how I track the Obamacare and how I track the actual company they're running through. I went under FARA, and all of that's on there, and we'll do another show another time, because there's a lot more to this field. Oh, I know. Uh, Telstar just made that comment in chat uh, probably three minutes ago. That and we're I not sent you an email. Look for the email I sent you. Look for it in your emails. I sent you and David both the international card game that they're playing, and I show you how I know. And I I went down with Denny Payman from Kentucky. He had me look over the voter identification numbers. They wouldn't give us the voter ID, so I only had candidates. Every candidate, every single candidate in Jackson County, Kentucky, some judge there was changing their prisoner identification numbers and putting the candidates' ID numbers and tying them directly to federal, um, to um, unverified illegal immigrants in the Arizona federal prison system. And that's it. Okay, well, listen, it's been very informative, and I'm sure everyone is just like me, and that's overwhelmed, but even I'm more more appreciative than we are overwhelmed. So I'm going to go home now. Uh, I'm in a little bitty office in a little bitty town, and I want to go up uh, to my home so I can call my wife, who's uh, she's from England. She has a valid passport, but uh, apparently the police take it over. The police, when they write tickets, you need to do this. One more thing, Phil. Okay. Everybody, put your number into Google. Your phone number, any old phone numbers you've had to, and put in XDD. And if you're in their fake system, the Koch brothers, I like to call them the Koch brothers, though, just for fun. Um, anyway, what you can do is look that up, and, and you get into that uh, xxd.org or x, excuse me, xdd.org or xdd2.org or xdd3.org. And that is the fake database under open sourceware that they are actually taking path that it's all in there, you will see. And they're saying that they just they just put out fake identities to protect all of us, right? So, yeah, there's something. Well, yeah, they're a mess. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm glad there's people like you that are exposing this. Uh, and I, I think before we close, I'll just point out that the way I got into doing what I'm doing, that was 10 years ago, uh, is I said a little bit of prayer. I won't, everybody's heard it, and I'll tell you via email. But uh, two hours and 25 minutes after I said a prayer, uh, my life got turned upside down. Uh, and I became someone who had been called to expose evil. So I think you and I have uh, done a pretty good job on this first uh, encounter, especially since I don't recall that we ever talked or exchanged emails. And if we did, I've, I'm... Well, you're, you're very busy, I, but it is there. I'm just telling you, it's not like... And David, David and I have talked, and he's answered back some emails, but you guys got so many, I'm sure. And my father, you know, I was adopted. I was adopted into a, a race, an interracial family. My mother is my real mother, but my father wasn't. And uh, I found out later that my dad was in the Air Force his whole life, and he worked for United Airlines out in San Francisco, California. So maybe that's where I get – my mother's very, very uh, educated, so maybe that's where I get my analytical skills. Um, Telstar says I think like a male. And I may, but I like, you know, I like solving puzzles. And to me, I look at this as a big puzzle and everybody can do it. I'm telling you, when you find the backdating and the names, like I say, you'll be like, I'll be dead or the different addresses. You'll be like, you'll figure it out and you'll be able to find it yourself. And I've helped many people to help themselves. And that's what I want. I want people to help and help other people. And let's get this thing done because it's not OK. They've stolen identities and it's the government and Hillary. They, uh, look at my videos. She's doing a fishing exercise. Anybody that replies to that or searches Pizzagate, they're going to tie you in on the back system through the IP address that they hold a hand it over to ICANN, and you're going to be there if you look up that Pizzagate. You're going to be doing a pay per click where they're actually, I think, in Turkey they're zeroing out now. They're calibrating just like in Cambodia, 75 to 79, when they zeroed out. They're ca they're calibrating the financial system because they're running a mill. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. No, thank you very much. And uh, thank Telstar for putting us together. And, right. and so what I will do, I'm going to sit here for another couple minutes uh, and I'm going to generate a chat room uh, access for you. So if you ever want to go in the chat room and leave stuff, 
Or I do. I've, I've texted stuff before, and I'm thinking, why am I not? Because by one time you were like, you're not in the main chat room. Oh yeah, there's a there's a free chat room at live stream, but uh, you know, I don't I don't know if some people watch both, but no, I, you'll see that we have a private chat room. It's a bunch of pretty well informed people. They all behave. Yeah, in probably four years, we've had to kick maybe three people out of the chat room, and I've only kicked one of those people out of the chat room, and that's because uh, he was using some colorful words in telling me that God didn't exist. Well, you can't prove a negative, but I know God does exist. I see what he's done in my life, and you're a good example of it. You know. Uh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we're all supposed to help our neighbors, and not everybody is good at everything, so if we can just share information, that's... Well, let's, let me, can I close out with one thing I need to say? Yes, please do. Okay. So look at, just look at an imaginary number line. You got the zero in the middle, and you got a negative one and a plus one, right? Yep. So if you think about that, there's an extra space there. Now, that's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And these folks in the Freemason world, I happen to know, for, for example, that I had family members in there... Um, they are taking that, and it is called the, it's a Bible gap, but what it is is, is a zero that ever expands. And in their world, heaven is amplified from the ground up, and you create your own heaven and earth. They are actually, they have hijacked the numbers and the Word documents, and Microsoft and the courts are key here because of the papers we file electronically. And those zeros in PDF, after I do an OCR, those zeros go from 10.5 to 27.5 font, which doesn't even exist. Why would they do that? Because Indiana, and I have this in there, it's called Operation Zero. And don't be too afraid of it. I kind of put it together for you. Uh, they changed pi back in the 1800s. And they've never taken it off the books because the man gave it to the education system. And I've actually been taught this in some of the colleges. So they are manipulating the electronic communications in the courts. And they've been doing it for quite a while. And I have a local... Um, TV station guy who gave me the old films from when he taped uh, our local officials and they're talking about it in there so they, there's no denying it. Okay, well on behalf of everybody across the uh, world that's been listening, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge with us and I'll send you a brief email uh, sometime in the next hour or two thanking you also and I'm sure you'll be back. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me Field, and thank you Telstar and everybody else. Thanks a lot and good luck and uh, See you another time. Okay, that sounds great. Now, would you hang up on me? I just hate to hang up on sure. people. Thank sure. you. Okay, she's gone. And uh, so I don't think I need a big red button. Uh, uh, did you not drink the flavor? Okay, I see you guys are starting to upload some of her stuff. Uh, I'm going to, as much as I hate hanging up, I'm going to end this show right now, and I'll post it, and then we'll uh, watch. And uh, I hope everybody that knows how to tweet tweets the show. I hope everyone that's on Facebook puts it on Facebook. Uh, these things that we deal with here at Able Danger, which, of course, doesn't exist, these things are global problems, and they have a, a supernatural solution uh, because the globe is only 25,000 miles around and it's a creation of God and he is in control. I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys. Sorry there was no notice on that show, but I'm um, just like you. I didn't know I was going to do a show either. So I'll just smile, say good night, and uh, I will communicate with Denise. Uh, that's my wife in England for those that don't know. And uh, she'll be here. I'll be there and everything will be fine. Uh, I think I'm done, uh, and thank you for having Carol on. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, once again, Carol apparently just scratched the surface, but she overwhelmed me. So on the count of three, I'm going to hang up, uh, and and uh, I think it's really good if we try not to, uh, this is for all of us, if all of us try not to overwhelm each other with personal thoughts. Um, there, Yeah, there's a time and place for personal stuff, but uh, there's the big red button, so enough about that. Uh, now, I guess since Gordon put up the big red button, I'm going to wait. Yeah, good night, uh, Doug, over in Cyprus. 
I just had an HSI and figured out 